So in this video, I will be deriving the future value formula for ordinary simple annuities, which you see there on the right hand side and your uh, terms that you should know is basically the payments are all equivalent. They're all the same. That's what an ordinary simple annuity is. They are located at the end of each term. So we have N terms. So here's your first term. Here is your second term or your period that you have third and so on all the way up to and I'm going to assume that we have N of these. So let's label them. So that's one. This is your second. This is your third. And it continues on until you have N of them. And that is your payment. Your interest that you have is labeled as I, and that is the interest per term. And because it is an ordinary simple annuity, then your actual compounding uh, interest is exactly the same as the uh, period for your payments. So how do we derive this thing? And how do we come across to the formula that you see there on the top right hand side of the video that you're watching. So if you were to take this and start to try to find out from first principles, what the equation for the future value is. So our future value would be basically located at this point right here. So our future value is basically at that particular point. That's where we want to know our future value. And that future value that we have, we would want to be able to move all the payments to that focal date. So now your last payment is basically at the future value. So there would be no interest associated with that first payment. So this payment would stay the same. So what we basically have is future value is equal to, so this would be your only your payment. So that's that payment number N, that's the first one. Then you have to move payment, okay, which is your payment N minus one, and you're only going to move it one term over. So this would be equal to payment. So we're moving it, so one plus I, one. So that's the first payment that is being moved. And then you continue and you do the same thing right here. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller for us and shift it down a touch. And what you would have is now your payment would be one plus I to the two plus, and you would have to continue this for every single payment until you would get to the last one. So we would have to do every single payment. Now the last payment that we have, so this one, if you would move it all the way to the future value, so what you would have, so let me put dots here, you would have that that payment is basically one plus I, and it would be N minus one terms. Why? because that first payment is at the end of the term. And that's why it would be N minus one. It's not starting right in the beginning. And that's what we had in our original okay, video. And you should watch that first lecture. I'm going to link that above. If you would want to see okay, the actual uh, future value with some examples, this is only for the derivation of the formula. So I have this and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to multiply. Okay, I'm going to take this entire equation right here. So let me copy it. Okay, let's make it a touch smaller. And just for convenience, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply it, right, by one plus I. Now, if I multiply this by one plus I, I have to do that to both sides so that I do not change the equation. 
So this entire side right here, I'm going to also have to multiply by one plus i. Now, when you do that, what you will get is you're going to get one plus i times your future value is equal to, now, your first payment is gonna be multiplied by one plus i, because we're multiplying it through. Your second payment that you have there is going to be one plus i to the power of two, because notice now your exponent is going to change because we're multiplying by exactly the same thing, one plus i. So that means we have one plus i to the power of two, and so on, and if you do that, by that multiplication, okay, you will find that you're going to have one plus i to the n. And notice that is coming from, because this exponent is n minus one, and if you take n minus one, and then you're going to be adding and multiplying it by this factor, then it's going to change that n minus one to n. And that's the multiplication between the two. So what I mean by that is that you are multiplying that last item multiplied by one plus i. So notice this has an exponent of one. So when you add up these exponents, you will get n right there because they have the same base. So we're using a little bit of the skill okay, of exponents from math. Let me remove this. And now, with this, what I can do is, if I would call this equation as equation one, and this equation as my equation two, what I can do is I can now subtract the two equations. So if I'm going to subtract equation one from equation, uh, sorry, subtract equation two from equation one, okay, so what I will have is on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna show you, so I have future value, subtracted, so this is what I have there. So this will become future value minus, because I'm subtracting, one plus i future value, right? So that's what I have there. I've taken this and subtracted that. Now, if you take the right-hand side and now you subtract this entire thing right here, okay? And this right here, notice something beautiful happens. That basically what will happen is that you will have, let me circle this in. So notice this, okay, will be subtracted off by this. So that's gonna equal to zero. This, okay, if you subtract this from it, again, that's going to disappear. So what you will have is that every single term here, so these terms and so on, all of these will cancel. The only ones that will not cancel, okay, is your original one. So this is going to be equal to payment. So this one does not cancel with anything, minus your last one right here. This one will not cancel with anything either. So that's going to be payment one plus i to the n. And now that looks a lot better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to factor out the future value from right here. So if I factor this out, what I will have on that side is, so I'm gonna have future value, I'm factoring it out, one will be remaining minus one plus i, okay, because I factored this out. But notice what happens here, okay? You have one minus one, okay? And then the negative i. So you're gonna have one minus one minus i inside of that bracket. So this cancels with that. And all you have left now is you have negative future value multiplied by i. That's on the left-hand side of the equation. On the right-hand side of the equation, what you have is I'm going to factor out the payment because it's the same. So I'm gonna have payment, then factor that out. So one minus 
and I'm going to have 1 plus i to the n. Okay, so this is what I have. Now remember, our original goal was to create the formula for the future value, and we're almost there. So to clean this up a little bit, okay, what I have is, I'm going to rewrite this as the following. So I am just shifting the term over. So that's that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by negative i. So that's going to leave me future value equals to, so now notice, payment, 1 minus 1 plus i to the n divided by negative i, which came from okay, that left-hand side. And this negative right here, so this negative right here, okay, I am going to bring it Okay, up because that just means negative one, right? So that's what it means. It means I have a negative one there. So what I can do is I'll take that negative one out. So negative one times payment, one minus one plus i to the n, and all I have left at the bottom is the i. So that negative got pulled up to the top. And just so that you can see now, what I will do, okay, to finish this off, is I am going to bring this negative inside of the bracket. Okay, so I'm going to multiply these in. So negative 1 times 1 becomes negative 1. And then the negative will cancel this negative as well. So what you will have is you're going to have payment in front. I'm going to keep that front. And now, okay, that becomes positive, so it's 1 plus i to the n. And then the positive one becomes a negative one because you've multiplied it, divided by i. And check that out. It is exactly your future value formula that you have on the top right-hand corner. I know, fun for those who like math and algebra, okay? Now... It's not easy to come up with this on your own. You have to be a little bit familiar, okay, with some tricks of proofs. But maybe for the one out of a, I don't know, a thousand or 10,000 students that actually are wondering where this future value comes from, this one right here, well, now you know. And I'm curious, put a comment down, let me know if you understood it. If you understood it, thumbs up right? You can try it out on your own. And now at least you know that it's not magic. And math is definitely useful. Because if we actually in ordinary simple annuities had to calculate the future value, by calculating and moving, so basically creating equivalent values for every single payment, that would be crazy that we would have to do that. Because if you have, let's say 50 or 100 payments, imagine having to do 50 or 100 calculations of equivalent values and then adding them up. Sure, I mean, you can do it, <laughs> but uh, it's much easier to have this very simple formula. And it comes from some man uh, manipulation of algebraic okay, structures okay, and terms and subtraction. All right, thanks for watching. I'm super curious if somebody actually is gonna hit a like on this. Uh, if you are, then... Uh, uh, I guess you're in my boat and you like uh, proofs. Okay, bye everybody. Okay, take care and see you in a future video.